To access the ice maker components, the ice bin housing will need to be removed. To remove the ice bin housing, start by sliding out the ice bin. Then remove these two 1 quarter inch mounting bolts that pass through the housing and fasten into the frame of the ice maker assembly. Slide the housing forward until the shoulder screws drop out of the slots cut in the ice maker assembly and remove the housing from the unit. There are three shoulder screws. We now have access to the freeze switch, the fill switch, and the bail arm switch, and the drive motor. To remove the drive motor, start by extracting these two screws. Then disconnect the wiring to remove the drive motor. The gearbox can be accessed now that the drive motor has been removed. To remove the gearbox, slide the gearbox and bail arm switch off of the ice mold drive shaft. To remove one of the switches, in this case the bail arm switch, start by extracting this mounting screw. The switch can then be removed. Disconnect the wiring to remove it completely. When reinstalling the gear box, start by pushing the ice mold into the freeze position. Then slide the gear box back onto the ice mold drive shaft. Reinstall the drive motor and we will move on to the remainder of the ice maker components. To better access the remainder of the ice maker components, the side plate will need to be removed. Start by removing this screw. Then slide out this small shield. When reinstalling this shield, it should not look like this. This will cause problems when the ice mold is running from the freeze and fill positions. Flip the shield and install it as shown, flush against the side plate. Disregard the screw if need be. To remove the side plate, start by extracting these eight screws. Be aware that these two screws will have small washers underneath and that this screw will be longer than the rest. Carefully bend the refrigeration lines out of the way of the side plate and carefully remove the side plate from the ice maker assembly. Be sure when reinstalling the side plate that the refrigeration lines are straightened out as they were before disassembly. To remove the ice mold, start by extracting this screw. Next, remove this strain relief using a pair of needle nose pliers. Then disconnect the wiring. Then carefully slide the wiring out and remove the ice mold. The ice mold also contains the T1 thermistor. Be sure when reinstalling the ice mold that the wire slide through this hole in the guide. To access the finger evaporator heater and defrost limit switch, start by removing these four screws. The entire ice mold assembly can then slide down the finger evaporator. To remove the finger evaporator heater, start by disconnecting this Molex connector located under the EEV. Then disconnect this Molex connector. The heater can then slide out. To remove the defrost limit switch, simply slide it down the second finger on the evaporator and disconnect the wiring. Be sure that when reinstalling the defrost limit switch that is put back on the second finger from the front. With the ice mold assembly removed, the ice maker evaporator fan motor and defrost limit thermostat can now be accessed. 
Start by extracting these two screws, securing the housing into place. Then release the retaining latch and slide the housing forward and turn it so the fan can be accessed. Disconnect the wiring to the fan. Remove these two screws to slide the fan out. Be sure that the fan is reinstalled in the same exact way to ensure proper airflow. To do that, the arrows on the fan need to match the ones shown here. The defrost limit thermostat is located to the right of the fan. To remove the thermostat, disconnect the wiring and then unclip it from the ice maker. The T3 thermistor is located here and can be removed by disconnecting the wiring and unwrapping the thermistor from the suction line. Be sure when it is reinstalled that the thermistor is installed at the bottom of the suction line. For demonstration purposes, we show this CAD image showing the exact placement of the T3 thermistor on the suction line. When reinstalling the ice mold assembly, be sure that this connection to the finger evaporator defrost heater is secured to the top of the liner with some black electrical tape. If this is not done, the ice maker will not go back together correctly and will not work properly. To access the auger motor and solenoid assembly, only the ice bucket housing and side plate need to be removed. To remove the auger motor, Start by removing the auger bar drive from the auger motor shaft by turning the drive bar clockwise until it is free of the auger motor shaft. Extract the three motor mounting screws. The auger motor can then slide out of the ice maker assembly. Disconnect the wiring to remove the auger motor completely. With the auger motor removed, the solenoid and plunger can now be accessed. Start by removing these four screws. The solenoid and plunger can then be pulled out from the ice maker assembly. Disconnect the wiring to remove the solenoid and plunger completely. To access the ice maker defrost heater, only the ice bucket housing and side plate need to be removed. To remove the ice maker defrost heater, Take a flat-headed screwdriver and remove the cover. The heater can then slide out. Disconnect the wiring to remove it completely. Be sure when reinstalling the heater cover that the wiring is placed in this open slot to avoid pinching any wiring. 